Hey, welcome to Spirit Soul Sense Information for Your Soul. I am Sharice. And recently there have been some very prominent celebrities who have passed away. And the reaction of the community has been very sad, very affected. I think a lot of people in their personal lives have felt a loss. And I have seen, you know, online communities rallying around creating space to discuss these things. But for some of us, like me, who don't feel particularly affected by the loss of the person, I feel particularly affected by the communal loss. And like there's a collective sadness that's in the air. And as someone who feels a lot and as someone who, you know, identifies as an empath, I just want to talk about, you know, some of the ways to like cope and exist in these spaces where a lot of people are sad and feeling upset about someone who maybe they've never met, but has had a profound impact in their life. I'm defining communal mourning or communal grieving or collective sadness as a large group of people who have come together to grieve the same person. It doesn't have to be a person that they know. It just means that they are focusing their energies on this one person and going through the process of grief where they're learning to accept that this person has passed on and what is it that they can learn and reflect and you know think about about this person's life that can get them to a sense of peace now. It's gonna be different for everyone. The, the idea of collective is just that there's a big group of people who are processing it in a different way, but just a lot, there's just a lot of people. I remember my very first experience of um, group, <laughs> group grieving, you know, we find these things at funerals a lot. So my very first experience was again, for someone I don't know, was I was in high school and a student was shot on campus, like tragically, well, right outside of campus. It was like on school grounds, but like outside of the school and he passed away. And the school, you know, had like a, a meeting with all the students to discuss how this might be affecting them, um, that there's someone that they can talk to, and here's like a space where we can just discuss what happened. Let's just process what happened. And this is like before I even really knew like spiritual stuff. I was very religious at this time, and I was feeling a thing. I, I did not have words for what it was I was feeling. I just knew I needed to get out because we were in the gymnasium. I was like, I just need to get out of here. I don't like being in here. Let me just go. And when I left, I actually went to like a corner. I went to like sit in a corner. Um, I was feeling emotional, right? For someone I didn't know. I didn't know this guy who died, but I was feeling like all the things that people around me were feeling. And so like when my friends came up to me and like a teacher came up to me and was like asking me if I was okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Like I didn't know him. I'm okay. That was like my first experience of taking on the energy of other people around me. You know, the next one was um, a funeral for someone I did know, but didn't know very well. She was a friend of the family. And I, I so I don't go to funerals. I don't go to funerals because I don't go to, like, so what happened was everyone is crying, wailing, screaming, sad, and I am just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I, I mean, yes, I'm sad, but I'm not like I'm about to die. Like sad, like my grief, when I grieve, I mean, I really haven't, I have lost. When I grieve, it is, it's not, I think I just get to acceptance pretty quickly. And so when I grieve, there there is not an extended amount of time where I have this outpouring of despair. There's no despair. I understand that our lives will end. My mother will die one day. Um, I understand that's just like the way life is. And so I don't feel like this shouldn't be happening. I'm so angry. I move through those pretty quickly and get to the space of acceptance. I do not think death ends a relationship. And so when people who've been close to me in my life um, die, 
I know that I can still maintain those relationships. I can still talk to people, um, not like in a, they're here talking to me, but I can still feel their energy. I can view it as someone looking over me instead of thinking that everything is over and it's unfair and life is terrible. So at this funeral, everyone is, you know, not everyone, but like the energy is so like ramped up with all of this sadness and despair and grief and i i said i'm not doing this again i'm not like if i go to something it's going to be a celebration of life where people are not crying they're just telling happy stories because this this idea that you have lost the piece of yourself when somebody has passed away um transmit an energy that i cannot deal with it makes me feel very uncomfortable uh it makes me start to feel like what the other person is feeling and i like I just have to, I can't be there. I can't be there. So I don't go to funerals. That's like my self-care thing. Um, I know like there will be very, very important people in my life that it would be very odd if I didn't go to their funeral. So we will cross that bridge when we get to it. We are not there yet. Um, but in this space of being a millennial, uh, being a young person who exists on the internet, who is trying to build a brand um i i just want to be very respectful and very careful about the people that i talk about who have passed on and i also want to be respectful of the people who are you know feeling some type of way about their idol their mentor you know not being here anymore for me i i am more affected by um the collective sadness that folks are experiencing and so my response to that is you know to discuss it with people close to me how i'm feeling like what's going on what is this triggering in me how do i like let this energy go and like not take it on and also getting off of the internet so when news and social media is inundated with just the same information um, I think news cycles, like when it's really, really hot, usually lasts for about two weeks. Um, like when that happens and it's about this collective mourning, I have to go. Like I am definitely sending everyone all the good vibes. Like I hope you get through this, hope you learn something. But at the same time, I have to take care of me. And I, I can't, I can't stay on the internet just soaking up other people's um sad emotions it just it just doesn't work for me you know it, it just isn't a feel-good kind of thing and so i try to stay away from that i think collective warning is powerful I, I think it's necessary um you know there's this space where other people are feeling a similar way as you and so you feel like you have you know people you can relate to and bounce things off of so that you move out and through the process i i just know this it just doesn't work for me <laughs> that's the point and i don't know if you have ever felt this way before or if you felt this way when another like celebrity um really big prominent figure type person passed away like it's very very important to honor people you know when they've died i think it's more important to give people their flowers while they're alive but after they've died there's definitely this period of time where we want to look back over their life and talk about their accomplishments and all the ways that they're great and I, I fully support that. And I encourage people to, you know, reach out to someone who is going to be understanding of the way that you're feeling so that you feel heard, understood, supported. That's, that's really all. And meanwhile, I will delete all my social media apps and take a break <laughs> and just live in real life. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do because, um, you know, everybody's different. And so this is just my process. Thank you for watching.